Hey everybody, welcome back in the shed. I'm Troy. This is Dave. Howdy. Today we're talking about the top three Midnight Special performances. Midnight Special was a, uh, a show that was basically mostly in the 70s, went on for about 10 years, I guess. Uh, but it was, a, uh, it was an entertainment show, had a lot of live performances. Back when I was young, I mean like 11, 12 years old, I was really getting into like more popular rock music. And uh, there were two shows that were on TV that, and the first one was Don Kirshner's Rock Concert. And it was a great show. And there was another show that was called The Midnight Special. And the Midnight Special was around for like uh, 10 years or so. And um, it was hosted, I think, most of the time by Helen Reddy mm -hmm. and uh, Wolfman Jack. Yeah, I remember the Wolfman Jack episodes because that was, I think that was later on in, their, in the, you know, in the late 70s. So I was probably like seven or eight and I remember staying up late and watching that. And I just, I love Wolfman Jack. <laughs> Last time I saw Rod Stewart, he was throwing microphones up in the air, catching them in his teeth, doing all kinds of things on the stage. Both of those shows were really special because they actually featured live performances. Not lip sync. Not lip sync. This is, which was pretty common back in the day when they had all those variety shows like we talked about before. but. This was live performances, and um, I don't know how I convinced my parents to let me stay up late on Friday night or Saturday night. I can't remember what yeah, night it I was on. Either, yeah. But Don Kirshner's was on, you know, late too. But uh, I don't know. Maybe they just fell asleep. I snuck downstairs, turned on the TV, <laughs> and that was it. But uh, these are what. We all got, there's a ton of Midnight Special episodes. I mean, really. Yeah. Like, how many? Uh, uh, I don't know a lot 75 probably more than that probably more than that yeah but they're on YouTube and it's so great yeah Midnight Special actually has a YouTube page now they probably started a year ago and they're uploading full episodes oh, and individual live performances yeah. and some comedy stuff too yeah yeah like Richard Pryor oh and all those George guys. Carlin George yeah. Carlin yeah yeah but it, it was it was a real special show and, and John Kirshner's show was as well I put them side by side you know I don't know which I like better but I don't I don't think I never watched Don Kirshner. I've, I have seen, you know, some of the shows on YouTube, but I don't remember watching that show back, you know, when I was a kid. It was about the same time. Yeah. But anyways, uh, we're going to pick our top three midnight special performances. And go for it. What's your number three? All right. My first one is going to be Hocus Pocus by Focus. <laughs> Man, I remember this one. It has to be one of the most insane performances on Midnight Special. Really? Do you know that song, Hocus Pocus? I think I do. Yeah, but I've, I don't. I've never seen the the. Oh man, the live performance. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. It was came out in 1973, so I was you know 12, but I saw it. I remember seeing it, and you know that was a actually a pretty popular song. It was in, pretty much an instrumental song. I think it went to like number eight on the Billboard charts. Really? But that song, you know, it was popular, but when they played it on Midnight Special, they, you know, amped it up or they sped it up. I mean, it's like twice as fast as the, <laughs> the recorded version really? I heard on the radio. And it still was like a six or seven minute song. <laughs> so, you know, you can imagine what it would have been like if they played it at a normal tempo. <laughs> But the lead singer and keyboardist is so crazy in that video. And uh, I can't think of too many songs in the history of rock and roll that incorporated yodeling and whistling. <laughs> But, you know, they were a Dutch band, and I think that was their only big hit. But, you know, they had great musicians in that band. It was really a, totally a jamming song on uh, Midnight Special. But uh, that's my number three. That's a good number three. I think I know that song. When you said yodeling, 
uh, you know, starts to come, but what was it? Something like that. <laughs> oh, yes. And then the whistling. But uh, we'll play the clips. My number three is the cars. Let's go. She's coming away. So the cars played on uh, Midnight Special a lot. Yeah, they yeah, had uh, they probably like six or seven times. Exactly. And but I picked Let's Go because well I don't know why I picked Let's Go. I just love that song. I think because we just talked about all these you know we talked about the cars you know one of our previous episodes. So I wanted to go with this song because this song was off the album Candy O, which mm -hmm. was our second album. Right. Which I just read it was actually that album sold more copies than their debut album. Well, it was a great album, and they had that string of hits from, you know, 78, 79, 88. They're cranking them out, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I liked about the Midnight Special is it was raw. There wasn't a lot of effects in the vocals, and very very little reverb. I mean, you could hear every instrument, and you could tell if somebody messed up. Well, I, I don't think they, act, you know, I'm sure it went through the board, and they could probably add a little bit of, you know, echo or reverb yeah. to it. But pretty much the performances on there were pretty straight up. Yeah. I mean, through the amps, mic, and then boom. I like the man, So like I said, you know, the album, Candy O, which is, this song was off of, it peaked at number three on the Billboard Top 200. And I love the Cars, one of my favorite bands of all time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's my number three. What's your number two? All right, my number two is gonna be Joe Walsh, Rocky Mountain Way. This classic song was also featured on Midnight Special in 1973. Joe is such a badass. And um, that song was really cool because he was just, he was killing it on the slide. And he was playing like a black Les Paul, you know. He looked really great. And the uh, piano player in the band had this kind of Liberace thing going on. <laughs> really? <laughs> where he's playing a, a grand piano and he's got the candelabra, you know, <laughs> on the piano. What's kind of weird about that song is that, you know, it was really famous for the talk box, but Joe kind of foregoes the talk box and he has his keyboard player playing it that same part through like uh, probably a mini moog or something like that. <laughs> Joe looks so rock star in this <laughs> episode because he's got like a, a bedazzled black velvet outfit on. <laughs> and of course, you know, he's playing great and he's singing great. And, you know, that's one of Joe's probably one of his most famous Joe Walsh songs as Joe Walsh. Yeah. But um, I love that song and uh, it's a really cool video and uh that's my number two good number two i don't think i've seen that version on in that special i'll have to go back and i mean i'm gonna watch it when i put this together <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> so my number two is acdc sin city so it was on an episode that came out in uh 1978 
and it's the only performance that I could find of ACDC on uh, Midnight Special. I don't know, maybe they played other ones, but when I looked on YouTube, I couldn't find any more. Well, I looked through them all, and uh, there were a lot of du or not duplicates, but a lot of the band, different, same band playing several songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so that's kind of weird that it they is only unusual. did one. Well, because, cause, you they know, might have done more, maybe they're just not on YouTube, but you would think they would be. I, I, I don't remember, because when, you know, we put these lists together like two or three weeks ago, it seems like, so I sort of forgot when I was doing the research, but... I think I looked at the episodes and who was playing on every episode, and I don't, I can't, I don't think ACDC. Well, they played. might have only done one because yeah. there was probably several on there that were. Yeah. It's just unusual that they would play that song because that song wasn't yeah, even I a know, single. I know. Yeah. But it's a jamming song, man. And what I what I love is. ACDC is one of those, at that time especially, they were very raw. And Angus Young was crazy insane playing guitar. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he moves around as much as he does and falls down on the ground and his eyes are closed half the time. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, I didn't watch that one. I watched so many of them that were on there. And there was really some bizarre combinations of stuff on there. Yeah. I, I mean, I, one of the ones I don't have on here, but it was kick-ass, was um, it was like Neil Shana Journey playing with Herbie Hancock. Yeah. It was like a jazz fusion kind of thing. Really? It was really pretty badass. <laughs> That's the great thing about the Midnight Special. They weren't just mining the, you know, top 40 rock songs and yeah. stuff like that, even though Helen Reddy was hosting it. You know, she's, I am woman, <laughs> hear me roll. <wrong." laughs> but it was, it was so entertaining, and yeah. the bands they had on there, you could really see a lot of bands that you weren't even really hip to on that show. So that song was on uh, ACDC's fifth album that came out in 1978, and that was actually the only single released off that album. And the single was only released in Australia. It, was, it wasn't even released here. Wow. Well, I never, I can't say I heard that song. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Yeah, the album was called Rock and Roll Damnation, which was their fifth album. I don't think it was one of their most popular ones. I don't uh, remember that album. Yeah, you don't know. Uh, I'm going down. That's so sad. sad. Got me. <laughs> so if you watch that video, it's, it's really cool because they're actually using the old ACDC logo. It's not the one we all recognize today. Bon Scott was a funky looking dude. <laughs> he wore those really tight pants, you know. He wore his jeans up <laughs> to his chest, you know. Yeah. God knows. Yeah, and he was an ugly. And of course, Angus, you know, oh, well, they weren't a pretty band. No, they were an ugly band. <laughs> <laughs> I love ACDC, especially the Bon Scott era. So that's yeah. why I had to pick that as my number two. So, what's your number one? My number one is Cheap Trick Surrender. Well, this song was uh, first aired on November 24th, 1978, and it was really right on the heels of their Live at Budokan album. But, you know, Cheap Trick was still hungry, and they were, you know, like I said, it was right off they'd only had that Budokan album out for a little while and these guys were on the show because that was really a huge breakthrough for Cheap Trick. But, you know, all the trappings are here of, you know, the classic Cheap Trick 
look and style. Yeah. You know, Rick Nielsen had his you know, button up sweater and his little, you know, cap and <laughs> his little beanie. Uh, Was that yeah. what it is? <laughs> Robin Zander had his white suit on and uh Bunny Carlos had, you know, playing drums with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> Back when rock and roll was rock and roll, man. <laughs> Back, that yeah. was a cheap trick or great. Yeah, and I've seen. They're them. still great. They oh, still. Yeah, yeah. They, I think they're they still, still tour and yeah. they still sound amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Rick Nielsen's kind of not getting around as good as he. Oh, used really? To. Yeah, yeah. But he's not young. He, they played here in Waco. What five, six years ago? No. Yeah. Where? Uh, I think at McLean Stadium. It was a big concert. It was a bunch of. Oh. It was a bunch of country artists. And they stuck Cheap Trick right in the middle of all these country Shit. artists. I must have been out of town because I would have definitely been there. Wow. It was a hot, it was a hot summer day. Oh, well, I'd have still gone. Yeah, yeah. But it was such a classic performance on, on the Midnight Special. And it's probably the first time anyone ever saw Cheap, Cheap Trick live. Really? I mean, you know, because, like I said, they were pretty much an unknown band until Budokan came out. And even though they'd been out... And had probably released. It's like ACDC. No one heard of ACDC, and Cheap Trick came out at the same time. Yeah. No one heard of those guys when their first album came out. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's my number one, folks. It's a good number one. I love Cheap Trick and I love that song. And I think I've seen that on there. It's a really good performance. Well, my number one is, and I, I think you can guess. What, what is it? <laughs> if I was to lay a bet down, I bet you it's going to be, because he did more than one video on there, but it's going to be Tom Petty. No. Really? No. What? You know, I didn't see any Tom Petty on there. No, I did see some Tom Petty. I don't know why I didn't show, choose Tom Petty. Well, she was an American girl, raised on promises. Should, well, I, should, I, should I revise my well, list? There's got to be Sabbath <laughs> or somebody like that. Uh, no, it? it's actually Kiss performing She. So, Troy remarkably throws Tom Petty under the bus for Kiss. Shame. shame. I'm gonna shame myself. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't, I, you know what, I don't, who knows. All right. I'm crazy, I guess. Kiss. Anyway, Kiss, shame. She walks by moonlight. So the reason I picked She, because it's it's a lesser known song by Kiss. You know, a lot of people don't know this song. I don't know. It was off their third album, Dressed to Kill. And it's actually one of three songs that Kiss recorded from their Wicked Lester days. I know she's cool. So before Kiss, their, the name of their band was called sure. Wicked Lester. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the three songs that they actually recorded for some of their albums. Leftover song. Yeah. But Gene actually wrote the song before Wicked Lester in a band he had called Bullfrog Beer. Bullfrog Bahir, B-H-E-E-R, which is an unusual name. I never, I've never even heard of that name before until I did the research on the song. Yeah, it's good they changed the name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the, the, they wanted to change their name to before Kiss? I think I've read about it, but what was it? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good thing they didn't change uh, it about. That one Especially won't. at that time, yeah. Maybe these days, maybe you could get away with it. But well, you know, Kiss got away with the logo, which had... K I, which was basically like this, you know, Nazi symbol. Yeah, yeah. Which I always wondered why they never caught more grief for that. Yeah, it's crazy. Because the SS, yeah, you yeah. know. Did Nazi. you know the two S's? I just saw an interview recently with Paul Stanley, because he 
he drew the logo. He he created the logo. And if you look at the S's, they're not symmetrical. Oh, really? One S is just a little bit different than the, the first S. And you probably never noticed it, but now that when you see it, you're gonna you're never gonna not see it again. All right. Well, I probably threw off all the neo Nazis out there. <laughs> What's great about the performance is it's you know it's classic Kiss, but sort of a a dumbed down level because they had the the candelabras, you know the candles sort of right, on the side right. of the stage. They had kind of some. But they're in full regalia. Oh yeah, they had the whole. They you got know, the boots. They, they had everything the, dressed up. They were playing live, and yeah. they, it was raw, and it sounded great. But they had the candles on stage. They had sort of mini pyro. Remember that band we saw at the backyard, that Kiss Rock and Roll Over band? Sure. That's sort of the, the pyro they had at the time. When uh, uh, Ace is playing his guitar solo, <laughs> like smoke comes, but it's just like this little puff of smoke. <laughs> it's, so, it's so cheesy. It's not the, uh, <laughs> he didn't uh, evolve into where he had, you know, flame shooting a foot out of the guitar yet, huh? Not quite. Yeah, uh, right. yeah it, well, was, it, it was a it was a it was a, a dumbed down version of their bigger stage show, I guess. All right. <laughs> but about four minutes into the song, they really start jamming. They speed things up. <laughs> And actually, Ace Freely starts doing some tapping, like some okay. Eddie Van Halen style tapping. So that's Kiss. where Eddie got it from. Yeah, probably. I'm sure that's where, <laughs> that's where he got it from. That's my number one, Kiss She. Well, you know, the Midnight Special is really hip to all kinds of music. Yeah. And um, and it was all recorded live, and that makes it really special, especially back in that time when, you know, lip syncing was obviously used on TV almost all the time. Yeah. But that show was so cool because it was live, and, and I love live music. Yeah. And uh, I just think... Um, I wish they had more shows like that now. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. I wrote it in my notes. I wish there were more, uh, you know, shows on TV that had, you know, performances. Even if it's not rock. I mean, even some whatever. Yeah. Just but nobody does live anymore. A little they, bit here and there, but they can't you know what? because most people can't do it. If you're a fan of classic rock, really go check out the Midnight Special YouTube page. You yeah. can spend a couple days just you know going through that channel and this shit's all great yeah i love it i watched there's like i probably watched 25 of them yeah yeah and, and there's like like i said earlier there's individual videos but there are full episodes which is like an hour and a half sure the you show know was a 90 minutes yeah show. i think the very first one they released i think not even a year ago it was i think it had john denver he was, right. I think, I, I could be wrong, I think he was the first host of the right. of the very first uh, Midnight Special. Anyway, that's our top three Midnight Special performances. Why don't you leave your picks below, and we got a link below, get you some merch, all that good stuff. We'll see you next time in the shed. Bye, guys.